It's time to take a spin with the all-new Mercedes E-Class, this new generation of the famous business sedan. Do we even still need an S-Class or is this just right enough? Here with Thomas and Autogefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the new front, new headlamp design, a little bit more playful, I would say, around here. Daytime running light integration, also completely new grille. We can see this is here the AMG line with the micro star pattern. The base avant-garde would also look kind of similar, so there's not a big differentiation between the base and the AMG line visually. AMG also features here these more sporty accentuations in the lower part. This color here is called Alpine Gray, a very beautiful one. It is not a matte color, but it already has somewhat of a matte look, and I think it's pretty cool. Here also in combination with the night package, that means that the side mirrors, for example, are blacked out. You also have black frames around, but of course you can still stick with chrome frames around the window. Length 4 meters 95 or 195 inches, not a big change, slightly 3 centimeters 1 inch that went into the wheelbase. Let's see if that has a significant effect on the rear legroom later on. Wheels, 17 to 21 inch. These are 20 inch wheels, pretty massive already. Multi-spoke design, also with some aerodynamic character. I think it looks very cool here, this black gray contrast, doesn't it? Rear axis steering is also a technology highlight. And there you can see it, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels, maximum 4.5 degrees and it comes together in a package with the optional air suspension. This vehicle is also equipped with that one. It's air suspension on both axles. The plug-in hybrid and the Estate would actually come standard with air suspension at the rear. And then again, you can upgrade to the full air suspension. However, rear axis steering only available here for the classic sedan form and not for the Estate or for the wagon. The base suspension, by the way, has already selective dampening. What does that mean? So they're not actively adaptive. You cannot adjust them in the infotainment system, but when they actually get the different bumps, they rule in a different way depending on the speed of the bump, on the impact it gets. And that is standard, but then there's no adaptive suspension in between. You directly go from the base suspension to the optional air suspension. That option in the middle is gone now. To the rear, that's super interesting because we have a completely new rear design. It goes through, but the middle part is not illuminated. But here, that's also one of my favorite features here. Look at that. The tail lamp signature forms these tiny stars, a cool new signature that differentiates also the E-Class right now. And in the lower part, out of fuel, fake exhaust, police alert, because this is a clear case for a fake exhaust not with the article fuel fake exhaust release. Turning indicator check here in the front. Looks pretty cool on top, right? Really wide area. Turning indicators in the rear. Well, not that spectacular. And if you want a change of styles, oh, how did that happen? <laughs> you can go for a nautic blue one. Very beautiful blue color here. You can see the light nuances in the sun. And this one is here also the exclusive line, the more traditional E-Class look. Here you can see this more traditional chrome frame grille with horizontal chrome spokes. Here the sensor field, that one is a little bit more prominent than in this grille. And here, of course, the standing star on top of the hood, the typical one. Yeah, you know, it's being ripped off many, many times when they're just standing on the road. So yeah, better keep it in a closed garage, definitely. But I think it has something, this very elegant look. But which one do you prefer? The more traditional one or the more modern, more sporty one in the AMG styling? Tell me in the comments. Here at the side profile, we can also see, once again, 20 inch wheels, but a little bit different styling here also with the bright spokes. And then we have the chrome frames around. This one you can also combine freely. For example, you can go for an AMG line but don't go for black frames, but for the chrome frames. So it depends if you take the night package or not. Without the night package, you have here also the blue normal vehicle color side mirror caps. So once again, more elegant in the side profile and the same counts also for the rear. You can still get a classic key fob, but the philosophy of Mercedes is now also to encourage people to use their phone, for example. Just have it here in your pocket and then you slide right here, they have the flush door handles, not the biggest fan of that. They also give you here some kind of feedback, but it's kind of weird, I feel. Door closing sound is really solid, like that. 
And what you can also do is then, for example, also lock the doors here in the Mercedes Me app. And you also have this locked confirmation, for example. And you can also have different things like trip data, your consumption, um, digital key, over the air vehicle updates, and so on. So, yeah, a little bit more functionality in this new generation, of course. Then let's open it once again. Inside of the doors here, that looks actually quite good from the build quality. In this new generation, you have these high gloss black panels like in the C class, S class, and so on. And this one does not give any haptic feedback anymore. I think that's a wrong development by Mercedes. Here, still good from these levers, and also nice with the brown interior and also then the brown felt at the inside here. So this is also different than, for example, if you compare lower Mercedes models, that here we also have this fabric covering on the inside. This all new interior, being the AMG line, you also get the AMG steering wheel with the two horizontal spokes with hashtag capacitive BS buttons. Not too easy to control while driving, that's the catch actually. And then I found this here, a very, very tiny detail, but from a build quality, I think this gap here, hmm, critical. I don't see that this is doing any good. I don't know. But I have to say the rest of the interior, for example, looks actually even better than the S-Class, I feel. These seats here, the optional animal skin equipment, but you can also get the Artico man-made leatherette. And that is, of course, and more animal friendly and also less in the CO2 E output. And the color would be actually the same. You get brown, black, gray, and so on, beige. And seating comfort here. It's typical E-Class business sedan comfort, headroom 189 or 6 for 2. Still leave some headroom, no problem. Although this one here is the panoramic roof. Yeah, this one here indeed has a roof you can still open. This slider function here is yeah, doubtful. You have this shade here, lucky to have that, especially in hot temperature. And then slide once again, or maybe five times, or six times, or seven times. Or, ah, there we go. And then the real roof is opening, and that opening is actually quite wide. You can also use the voice controls. I fear it doesn't work for closing. Close the sunroof. Please close all doors to use this function. Close all doors first. Sorry. Let's try again. Close the sunroof. Closing the sunroof for you now. Hmm, that works. Not sure if it also works in the US because of different safety regulations, but that also works with the real roof, not only with the shade. By the way, you maybe saw or heard that I did not say, hey, may say this first. And the thing is, if you are alone in the vehicle and you see this small symbol in the top of the infotainment system, then you can also Unfortunately, put I could the not find voice commands without saying hey Mercedes first. So um, when you have a co-driver, then they say hi, you know, we don't know where the voice is coming from. Maybe people are just talking and so on. But when you're alone, then you can use this new function, making the voice control easier. This cockpit layout here with digital instruments, then this super screen, 14.4 inch, not hyper screen because it's not that large. And you can also get this passenger display. Digital instruments also available with 3D effect you can't see on camera and you can change the whole styling sport or also full screen map But that's just for the car internal GPS and you can also get this head-up display with GPS information Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What is this? Yeah, that's for the camera app. You don't have to go for that one. You can there we go <laughs> And then you can for example take selfies or use that one here for video conference calls, but what do you think? Is it bad for data security? Hey Mercedes, is it bad for data security? This is the car internal map and then you have this new app view. I think that's cool because while driving you can better press these huge buttons here for example and also for the Apple CarPlay integration which is not fully I would say has to be limited somewhat because it's a wider screen and yes you've maybe already seen it you can also play Angry Birds. Also I think a case of over-engineering, why would the vent controls be digitalized that they, uh, they move after you control them here in the infotainment system? I don't see any good reason for that, but luckily you can still just do it manually. So the infotainment system has a better overview, it is quicker, has more functionalities, but then again, the climate unit, you have to press in the lower part, then slide this one plus minus 
or the voice control, no real dials. I can do no, things for you. How no, may I help no, you? Thank you. Um, yeah, it <laughs> remains the problem. The user interface, I think, not easy enough. And this symbol here in the top left, very important for European customers so far, maybe later also for other customers, you can deactivate the speed warning. And even better here at the steering wheel, we hold the mute button like a little bit longer. So a short press is mute the music and a holding a little bit longer is then activating or deactivating this speed limiter. And what is this actually? So new regulation for newly homologated cars so that are coming new to the market is that when you exceed the speed even just by one kilometer, then at every startup and also when you stop the vehicle and then start it again, there has to be three warning tones in the EU regulation. So 50 kilometers an hour, 51, and it's like beep, beep, beep. And it's super, super, super annoying. And this is a very quick shortcut to deactivate it. It's a law, it's a regulation thing. So the manufacturers, the only thing they can do is implement some shortcuts like these. And Mercedes are the first ones to offer these kind of shortcuts. What's awesome here, reduction of high gloss black piano, like at least in the middle console, listen to that. Ah, beautiful. I love this matte open cell wood. Looks cool, feels cool, awesome. Then you can slide this one open and then you have adaptive cup holders. They are not holding the bottles that tight though. In the front part here, the inductive charging pad and two USB-C chargers. This super screen is, how could it be otherwise, an option? And the standard screen would also fit the same size, the same screen behind it, 14.4 inch. It stands a little bit more out than here. It also fits underneath the air vents, but then the right side is left blank and then you can work with more decor elements. And I think maybe not a bad solution at all. The same goes also if you remember EQS, EQE with that hyper screen, super expensive option, but then it takes away the feature of the deco element here. In this case, it's not as expensive as the hyper screen, so you won't pay so much more extra money here for the super screen, but still it's always worth to take a look into just the base setup. Rear seats, welcome right here, take a look. This classic rear wheel driven platform or rear wheel biased all wheel drive, you see here a huge metal tunnel then to the rear. This of course limits the space in the middle. But what about the sides? Let's take a look. There's a little bit more wheelbase now and you see you have quite some space here in front of your knees. Not too much considering the length of the vehicle, but definitely enough and good comfort. Besides here, I would need more space for my elbow. That's a little bit limited. I can still put a hand over my head though, instead of the door of the rear. It's actually very nice how the quality and build quality is also from the inside. Just too much high gloss black Pianellica once again, I feel. In the middle part, you can also slide to the inside part here. That's really hard and also a little bit higher. You can take it for shorter routes, but not ideal. You also have more hashtag capacitive BS in the middle part for the climate control. And then you have cup holders sliding out like this. Let's check out the trunk or the boot. At 540 liters here for the sedan, for the ICE version. Plug-in hybrid is limited here in height as we had in the studio. What's cool is that we have a significant length here of 115 in meters or 45 inches. And also the height here is 50 centimeters or about 20 inches. So that's actually pretty cool. Underneath we also have some space, actually a lot of space. So that's pretty cool here for the pure combustion engine version and then a cool folding mechanism like here. I you know, show you better on the other side. So easy, straightforward like this and there we go. It folds flat so that's pretty cool. Just this hard pack material right here. I don't understand this. Also collects so many scratches but then here the folding flat mechanism is pretty cool. And another feature here when we pull this button here in the top there is this retractable towing hook and it goes out and the cool thing is it even automatically goes in again. And here we have second interior styling for you. Fully bright color. I think also a beautiful solution. Just brings more light to the interior. Here and also with a matte wood middle console elements. Also cool in the brown style. And you maybe also saw this one has a different steering wheel. 
this is the exclusive line and then you don't have the AMG two spoke steering wheel but that one I always call it one slot design yes yeah, it's slot hmm here I think the AMG steering wheel is way more beautiful isn't it and comparing trunk or boot of the plug-in hybrid you can see here you lose something in height otherwise there would be the step in there but then again you have an even loading space and this plastic part in the back there is gone then yeah, but overall, of course, the combustion engine has a better trunk capacity. The only thing is, if you compare the predecessor here, plug-in hybrid, to this one now, before it had that massive step inside, this is, of course, now a better solution. And here then, you know, another bag for the cable. Engines, not as much horsepower as the ship behind me. By the way, this is the River Danube in Vienna, Austria. Here, let's take a look. This is a powerful one, the 3 liter 6 cylinder from the E450, 380 horsepower plus the EBOS from the mild hybrid system and 4.5 seconds is the acceleration figure. In general for the all new Mercedes E-Class there is this 3 liter 6 cylinder petrol and also a diesel upcoming and on a smaller scale the 2 liter 4 cylinder petrol and diesel based on that also the plug-in hybrids with around electric range 100 km 60 miles from a 20 kilowatt hour battery. There will be rear-wheel drive versions or all-wheel drive versions, like here the E450 4MATIC, the 3 liter 6 cylinder. We'll drive that one right now. It has an all-wheel drive distribution, 45% front, 55% in the rear. Still some rear bias for that. Mercedes E-Class 450 in a new generation. Acceleration test in the sport mode. From 60 kilometers an hour, let's go. And 130, well, even a little bit more. Pretty quick, right? So good performance, 380 horsepower plus electric boost from that mild hybrid system. This is also equipped with the air suspension in the sport mode. It's a little bit sportier, but you feel it's classic E-Class here in that faster bend. It's not set on a super stiff note, even, oh yeah, guys throwing cigarettes out the windows. Great, especially for motorcycle drivers and of course for the environment as well. Um, so back to the car review. <laughs> Let's go here. Motorway, 100 kilometers an hour. One more quick acceleration from 100 to 130. Nope, that's it. So yeah, that is the six cylinder power indeed and it just delivers so well. Slight rear wheel bias. So when you have the all wheel drive like we have here today, no matter actually if four cylinder or six cylinder, you have a distribution 45% in the front, 55% in the rear, so a slight rear bias here for that all-wheel drive system, but overall pretty balanced. And here when you drive the six cylinder, not only for the acceleration, which is, by the way, at 4.5 seconds, easy to remember, the E-Class E450, 4.5 seconds. Is that the reason they do that? <laughs> yeah, I did has an, another background it derived originally from the displacement figures and so on but yeah that's all gone now but at least it matches the acceleration figure that's good but i also find good is even when you here go back to the normal driving mode here in the lower part we have to switch it here in comfort mode so at least i don't have to press it again in the infotainment system i can just press the lower arrows here so that's fine with me then somewhat so when you have the six cylinder engine here, you can just keep it at lower RPM and that keeps the car really calm and collected and I really like that. And here on the motorway at 130 kilometers an hour, so like 70, 75 miles per hour, this is what the E-Class is basically meant to, meant to be. Just this luxurious experience, this air suspension, like a magic carpet ride you sometimes call it. So when you have an air suspension here, like we have optionally equipped, you really feel that air suspension. And that's also what I would expect, actually. Some air suspensions are tuned so stiff nowadays that you really don't feel anymore you have an air suspension. This one does work. Here, by the way, in the GPS, the augmented reality, where you have these flying arrows, and then you know with the camera image, image where to go, but it, it looks cool. Me, personally, of course, you could also deactivate it. I found a simple map description somehow better. You can sometimes you can't really concentrate on the real world and then this augmented reality world. 
I found just like, you know, normal Google Maps guidance actually more practical, I think. When you compare previous generation to this generation E-Class here, you still feel that it has these core E-Class values. Not so much tuned to the sporty way, more to the comfortable driving experience, the luxurious driving experience. It feels a little bit more planned and on the road. Of course, they have evolved and worked on suspension and all the, the electronic systems and so on. When you have the base suspension, by the way, it has these progressive dampening on the top, so it's not an adaptive suspension that it changes with the driving modes, the standard one, but it reacts according to the situation automatically. But here the air suspension is a fully adapted one, so when, go, when I go to the sports mode here, it's also a little bit stiffer than here, gives me a little bit more feedback. To me, the best thing they have improved in this generation here is the steering. We've seen it now with some new Mercedes models. It is more precise and you have a better feeling for the vehicle. Here there's no dead zone area. When I do a lane change, does it so well and just slight movement is actually needed. I really like that new philosophy of the steering. It is sporty and comfortable at the very same time. So pretty cool actually. They have also worked on the assistance systems, so they fine-tuned all of them. You have a blind spot monitor, you have like triangles in the side mirrors, you have more elaborated adaptive cruise control, for example. And what is also now possible, and they will start that feature in the US and in Canada, that when you set the cruise control, and for example you have set a higher speed and the car is driving in front of you, then there will be an automatic lane change. Let's see at some point if that's, if that's possible here. Also the car is uh, into a car in front of me. The distance is being kept very well. Yeah, the speed cameras here in Austria are sometimes behind you, so you always have to pay attention to that. So being here in the comfort mode, let's just recheck that. Yeah, I was. That, that's the thing, you know, that you have to check if you are still in the, if you're already in comfort mode or still in the sport mode, because it always gives you a lot of comfort. So I'm really fan of this air suspension here and one of the rare manufacturers that still follows the true air suspension philosophy. So the whole driving experience feels very sophisticated and as I said my favorite is the sportier steering which is at the same time also comfortable in the AMG setup here from design with the two spoke and so on. Noise insulation also one of the key things here of the E-Class has been improved further so here at 180 kilometers an hour, like 50 miles an hour Oh, it's so super silent, you hear nothing from the outside world. And there we go. Yeah. So you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel. I just you know lifted them a little bit now for demonstration purposes. I had set the cruise control to 80, and then the car was realizing, okay, we would run on this car. Oh, we would re oh, God, God, God. <laughs> reduce the speed before. So then when the left lane is free, go to the left lane, hits the turning indicator yourself itself, the car, well, is the car he, she, or it? Let's leave it up for the discussion. It depends, right? <laughs> is, this, is this he, she, or it? E-class? I, I think E-class is more like, you always say it's, you know, like like proper business suit. I think E-class is more a he, is, isn't he? Yeah? Maybe. Okay, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, I mean, that was very impressive here. So a good uh, live demonstration of this new feature and why not, it adds some more comfort. Before it was that you had to tip the turning indicator to introduce that to yourself. And uh, <laughs> you know there are those, uh, those jokes out there. Um, always depends, of course, on the car brands, but often there's this joke uh, that BMW drivers, you know, don't hit the turn indicators. So uh, you can say like, oh, is there also the BMW feature that does the lane change without setting the turning indicator? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm frequently driving a BMW myself, so probably I do, shouldn't do that joke. Um, but you know, there are jokes typical about every car brand. Like there's always the taxi E-Class joke, you know, like, hey, if I want to drive an E-Class, I'll order a taxi. Because especially in Germany, the E-Class has always been the, t the taxi car. Not anymore, Mercedes wants to do luxury experience only, says, Forget about taxi drivers, we don't sell them anymore. Toyota and Lexus should do the taxi business. 
So that's their decision right now. Also interesting, a lot of taxi drivers are furious about that, but they also told me that recent E-Class got less um, durable, you know, when you compare them to previous ones. We have to see how it is with this generation here. So what we could feel, see, drive, experience-wise, wow, really outstanding. Yes, there is the user interface here, which is not ideal while driving. I like to have more physical input there. Maybe a little bit over-engineered as for the software thing, and also having like always these like the Chinese customers in mind, especially. Yeah, that's the only downside of this vehicle to me. But everything you experience as a driver, then hardware-wise, from the pure facts, from the engineering, is just awesome. And you really have to wonder: Does the S-Class really deliver you more in driving? I would actually easily take an E-Class and. I don't see much more benefit now in the S-Class in this generation. Besides, of course, you have more space in the rear. And you can check out that review, for example, BMW 7 Series versus S-Class or more E-Class content here from this new generation.